Welcome back everybody, this is the Johnny Mayor, and I am continuing with Pokemon Blue, my complete Pokedex journey. So in my last episode we explored Celadon City here, and now we are going to head into the Rocket Game Corner and find out what all of the hubbub is about this secret base that apparently exists underneath this particular establishment. As we heard in a previous episode, that there is something strange going on at the Rocket Game Corner and that people suspect that there is a hidden hideout below it. And so we are going to take our Pokemon, our current 35 owned out of 80 seen, and we are going to talk to this suspicious character here standing in front of this poster. And he notes that he is guarding the poster, which is interesting. Why are you guarding that poster? Is it just incredibly popular? Was it signed by someone that's a celebrity? Was it that lady that's over in the house to the west of this town that we got Fly from? Well, you don't have much in terms of Pokemon. You're gonna notice that the rockets in this area do have a lot of the same Pokemon. I'll show off the unique encounters, but I'm gonna end up probably skipping most of the battles in here in terms of showing them, simply because it's just going to be the same Pokemon over and over again. You're going to see a lot of Rattatas and Raticates, some Zubats. There are going to be some unique ones in terms of some Drowsies and some Sandshrews. A few Poison Pokemon in terms of Grimer and Coughing. But beyond that, it's about the same thing over and over again. But he's going to head off and tell the boss and disappear over to the right here. It was magic or science. Let's find out by touching this poster. And apparently there's a switch behind it. Let's push it. Who wouldn't? And here we have the secret door, which leads into the Team Rocket hideout. So again, lots of trainers in here, and then quite a few items to pick up as well. And we're finally going to meet the boss of Team Rocket. So we'll grab this escape rope, and then we'll take on the trainer up here. Is it a trainer? Would you consider Team Rocket to be trainers in the classic sense? I'm not sure I would. My guess is they are not very nice to their Pokemon, given all of them basically have whips in their animations and their character sprites. We get a secret item here in this tree, which is a PP up. Always nice to grab one of those to increase one of our moves that has less PP associated with it. We came through the front door. Now we're going to go all the way down to the bottom. There are four floors in this hideout. And this place also introduced one of the more infamous aspects of Generation 1, and that is the teleport tiles, which move you along the ground. No, don't use hypnosis, you jerk. I think I'm just gonna use an awakening. I don't wanna have to deal with trying to wake up from this and probably getting re-put under the sleep condition. So we're just going to try to kill this thing as quickly as possible. And then we'll head on. But yes, there are teleport tiles in this particular dungeon, if you can call it that. We take on a Machop here. And the thing about them is that they are very, very slow. Now they're not teleport tiles in the sense of one of the later gems in the game, but they move you along the ground in a particular direction. And so they will point in a particular direction with arrows, and then you will move on them in that direction. Uh, sure, I'm dissing Team Rocket, and there's nothing you can do about it. So I went out and healed, because Jolteon was getting a little beat up, and we have a lot more of this dungeon to go. But there are the teleport tiles over there. Or movement tiles, or arrow tiles, whatever you want to call them. I always call them teleport tiles. This guy lets us know there are four basements, and it is, it's pretty deep. This place, there is a elevator, which you actually have to use a lift key for. You got word from upstairs, huh? This guy says the same thing, even if you don't encounter any of the other trainers in here. But I suppose you did have to fight the one guy at the poster to get into the place. My Vulpix is getting beat up here in some of these battles. 
So that makes sense to a certain extent. But I guess even if you glitched in here somehow, his dialogue would be set. So we have our second hidden item here, just to the north and east of this bald item, and that is a nugget. And then we will get a TM, TM10. Is it a valuable TM? Well, let's check it out and see. Apparently, I never put this stuff into my PC. Double Edge! Another one of those normal type abilities that does recoil damage, so I do not use them. I know they're powerful, but I just don't like the recoil damage. But here we go with the tiles. Look how slow we go. And especially if you go in a direction that you don't want to, as we pick up a rare candy. It can be really aggravating to have to slowly watch your character spin around as he goes in the way you don't want him to. I'm going to try to be as efficient as possible on these tiles so that we can get through this as quickly as we possibly can. We want to head down and then take this northern tile, and that'll take us to that other trainer down there as well as the basement. Let's fight this guy. We're not going to stop meddling in your affairs. We are the protagonist. And you all are the antagonists. Unless you count Mewtwo. But I don't, because we haven't had the movie yet. So he's not really an antagonist yet. Let's head down to the bottom floor here. Now this is ultimately where the boss is, but he's in another part of this floor that we can't yet access until we get the lift key. We got an HP up there. And to gain the lift key, we actually have to come up here to the northern part of this room and we have to fight this particular rocket member. We'll grab a TM first, TM2. Is this a useful TM? Let's find out. It is Razor Wind. Eh, not really, I don't use it. Mainly because I don't really use grass Pokemon, but it's not that great of an ability anyway. Who has the lift key? I have no idea. Who could it be? It's this guy. And it is interesting how many of the trainer portraits in this game do use whips. That was sort of phased out over time. You know, it's some of the criticisms levied against this franchise. With the fact that this is essentially, you know, animal fighting. But here we are facing a poison Pokemon that we already took out in coughing, and now we have a Zubat. Team Rocket likes their normal Pokemon as well as their poison Pokemon. So you have to beat this particular member of Team Rocket, and then in this game, Generation 1, you actually have to talk to him again to get the lift key to drop. I believe in the remake, you just have to beat him, and then it automatically drops. And it might actually do that in yellow as well. Now we have the lift key. I did some backtracking, I healed, and now we are going to continue onward and get to the elevator. We have to deal with this horribly large room with these arrow tiles on them. So there are quite a few items to pick up. One of them is actually incredibly optional and makes you go a long way out of your way on a lot of these tiles. Not this one that I'm getting to the north here, but rather down into the southwest. I'll be getting it, but you really don't need to because it's just a super potion. But if you do want to get everything, I guess you can follow the steps I'm going to show, and that will allow you to pick it up. We get another Moonstone for my eventual evolutions of certain Pokemon that require it. And we get another TM. Is this one useful? Let's find out. What is TM7? Horn Drill. Hmm. Well, no, it's not useful for me. Some people might find that ability useful in certain situations, like, I don't know, speedruns. But uh, yeah, not for a normal, kind of more casual playthrough of the game. Now keep this arrow tile in mind, I'll be coming back to it once I finish off getting that last item. If you don't want the super potion, just take the northern arrow tile there and you will continue onward to the lift. But again, I'm a completionist, so I'm going to be grabbing everything.
So here we go. Let's grab that super potion. And then I'll meet you back at that northern arrow tile. So we're back and we're ready to go to the elevator or lift, I guess, depending on your regional dialect. We're not going to use a ton of British slang in this game. Although I guess some people do call elevators lifts, depending on the type of elevator they are. Even in the United States. We came here to beat up your boss. And we're also looking for a particular item that we don't know we need. Really? We've heard some rumors about it. But we do need it. I think one of the rockets actually mentions it. It's called the Sylph Scope. And we do need that to climb the Pokemon Tower. Intruder alert! Who? It's me. I'm the intruder. A precocious little young ten-year-old who's come to beat you all up. Whatever shall you do? Alright, so now we're going to head to the lift. There are three floors that you can access. Floors 1, 2, and 4. We cannot access floor 3. It does not have a stop for the lift. You can go back up to floor 1 and actually fight one more trainer, and that'll allow you to exit the hideout. But before we do that, we are going to take on these remaining few trainers, and then we will exit and heal. So these are the two guards of the boss's room. And they have, again, some more common Pokemon, although they have some of the evolutions of those Pokemon. So this trainer has an Akins, and then also has an Arbok, kind of waiting in the wings. Not that it's that powerful, as Bolt levels up to level 31, and is trying to learn Thundershock when we already have Thunderbolt. Well, that's actually probably more useful than, say, Tackle. So let's change Tackle out. We do have Quick Attack which is, in essence, a better tackle. But Sandshrew, we're not going to be able to do much against. So we're going to switch over to our Vulpix. I mean, obviously our Squirtle would be better, but I'm trying to get experience on Vulpix to get it to 35 so I can learn Flamethrower. That is one of my priorities. Get Vulpix to 35 to get Flamethrower so I can evolve it with a Flamestone, and then get my Diglett to 40, or 41, whichever it is, it might be 40, to learn Earthquake. And then I'll let it evolve into Dugtrio. Here's the Arbok. Poison Pokemon. Wonder what we'll do with our ground Pokemon. We're gonna use a ground attack. And Dig will knock it out very quickly. Now the other trainer here has the evolution of Sandshrew, which is, of course, a Sand Slash. You're sorry, boss. Well, I like how he turns around and faces the wall in shame. I did foil your plans at Mount Moon. I foil them everywhere I go. You will never succeed. Not when this ten-year-old is running around. Now, in yellow, you actually will fight Jesse and James here again. Instead of these two grunts. Although they're not named Jesse and James in yellow. They're just named Rocket members. Which I always found interesting. But we'll actually go with our Squirtle here. Let's burn through, in a manner of speaking, deluge through, I guess, these Pokemon. Especially the Sand Slash we'll be facing after this Akins. But we'll try to get a little bit more experience on our Vulpix. And then, once we beat this particular Rocket member, the door will open. We're going to head over to the left first to grab an item. And then I'm going to be exiting out of the rocket hideout to heal. I'll save, and then we'll head into the final room of this dungeon to take on the boss. Here's Sand Slash. Let's see if it can stand up to a water gun. It can! Nice job. I suppose I should have taught my Squirtle Bubble Beam. Oh well. It still works. It's still good. It's still good. But I'm sure all of you know who the boss of Team Rocket is. He's actually also related to one of the gyms later in our adventure. Which I know is a spoiler. Sorry. A spoiler on a game that's how many years old now? We got an iron. Not that great. 
So we're gonna head back up to the first floor. I'm gonna show that trainer battle off that you need to fight in order to get out of the rocket hideout. So we'll beat him up. We'll exit out, we'll heal, and then we'll go back down and take on the boss. So after beating him, the door opens. Let's go heal, and then take on the boss. All right, so we're back. And there's the boss, wearing a pretty nice suit. But before we talk to him, let's get the final hidden item in this dungeon. And the speaker behind him, the super potion. Let's talk to him from the side. I'm not sure if talking to him from behind matters in terms of the item drop that happens after the battle. I'm not sure if it matters for the rocket member either with the lift key. Like if you stand in the spot where the item is supposed to drop, does that matter? Does it show up to the side or does it move you around? I might have to check that out at some point. But he has a couple of ground rock Pokemon which are quadruple weak to water. So we're gonna burn through them again in a manner of speaking very quickly with our Squirtle. And then his final Pokemon is completely different though. It is not a ground Pokemon. You gonna level up Squirtle? Oh yeah. Not that I'm gonna let you evolve. Not quite yet. One more level, then I will let you evolve. Maybe. I'm waiting until I can get the second evolution and then the third evolution of Squirtle in rapid succession of levels. But here we have Giovanni's final Pokemon, which is Kangaskhan. So it really can't do much against our Diglett here. Giovanni might use a guard spec on it, but none of its abilities are gonna do much to us while we're digging. So we will take it out very quickly. And that is it for Giovanni, the boss of Team Rocket. We've defeated Team Rocket, they're done. It's over. Wifey is evolving. Not quite yet. And then he gives us the item we're here for, which is the Sylph Scope, which will allow us to go into Pokemon Tower and get another item that we need to progress further into the game. So he's gonna step aside for now. And we are going to step aside for now, too, and call it an episode. So yeah, there's nothing else to do here. Let's just head on out. No, let's grab that item. We'll talk to the rocket to see if their dialogue changes. I don't think it does. And then my next episode, we'll head back over to Lavender Town and take on the Pokemon Tower. As always, viewers, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you for the continued support, and I'll see you all next time. Let's check out that self scope. Can we throw it on the ground? No. Can we use it? No. So long. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please press like and leave a comment below. Please also subscribe to my channel and press the notification bell. See you next time.